Ninja, I hope you're doing well today. In today's video, we are going to have a mock call practice video for a healthcare slash insurance billing inquiry. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's begin. Thank you for calling Life Member Services. This is Rhea. How can I help you today? I have a question about something I received in the mail. Sure, I'll be glad to assist you with that mail. Can you please tell me more about the mail you received? Well, you see, it's like this. A couple of weeks ago, I was involved in an accident and I was rushed to the hospital. But I feel better now. Anyways, I was under the impression that my insurance or you guys will cover the whole bill, but this paperwork says something else. Well, first of all, I am sincerely glad to know that you're all good now. I will be happy to check your account so that I can help you better. May I have your complete name and member ID? Peter Porter. ID number is um, 675646. Thank you, Peter. How about your date of birth and address, please? It's May 12, 85, 321 First Street, in L.A. Thank you. Let me check your account real quick, okay? Okay. Upon checking here, Peter, it shows that a claim for $1,000 was paid last week, that was August 12th, and that it says that it actually covers your entire bill. By the way, on that letter that you received on the topmost right part, does it say this is not a bill? Oh, well now that you mention it, it does say this is not a bill. Okay, that's good to know because what you have there is an EOB or an explanation of benefits. It should show the breakdown of the charges and the amount that we, your insurance, paid for. So you see, every time a claim is processed, you will get that information for transparency. And I truly apologize for the confusion that this letter has caused you. Ah, I see. That, that's good. Because, you know, I still have some medicines to buy and the last thing that I want right now is to pay another bill. I know, I understand. I, I'm glad to clear things up for you. And again, no need to worry about the hospital bill. We took care of it for you. Just take care of yourself, okay? Well, okay. Thank you so much. Have I addressed your concern today? Yes, you have. Oh, I'm just happy everything is paid for. Yes, it is. Well, Peter, if there's nothing else, thank you so much for choosing Life Member Services. You take care, and I'm wishing for your speedy recovery. Thank you. Now that you've seen a sample call, let's talk about the tips and reminders that you need to remember when handling this type of call. Recently, someone emailed me asking whether it is more challenging or more difficult to be in a healthcare account compared to a telco account. Now, I answered that a telco account might be just as difficult or challenging as a healthcare account. It really depends on how you look at it. But maybe a telco account appears easier because it is more familiar to us it's just about telco you can compare it to globe or smart here in the philippines and the familiarity makes it less stressful in a way that you already know sort of what to expect from the callers but in a healthcare account unless you have really worked in that industry before you don't really have any idea of what to say or what to do or what types of call you will get but that is the reason there is a training period so that you will learn all the necessary things that you need to learn about a healthcare type of call. Now in that call, it's an inquiry call. As you remember, the caller was asking about a mail that he received uh, and he thought it was the bill that he was supposed to pay when he knew that the insurance company should be the one paying the bill. And in this case, it is very important to start with empathy in your call. We always talk about empathy in all our calls. Remember that you should always consider feelings first before facts. So although the customer was calling about that particular bill, he did mention that he just got off from an accident. And of course, that alone is already something that can be uh, challenging or difficult for the customer. You don't know exactly what the customer is feeling at that time so you have to bank on your empathy statements and 
forget about saying fake it till you make it because when an accident happens to someone, you really have to show that you're sincere and genuine in your empathy and that you have to show the, the customer or the caller that you care for him or her and that you are willing to help. On another note, talking about empathy, just because we are so used to giving it out in some of our calls or maybe in our previous accounts or previous companies, it might come off as insensitive or not genuine when we say it. So this is something that we also need to practice beforehand. Uh, and we also have to sound more natural and conversational when we are delivering our statement. Our immediate response is to say, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I understand how difficult it is for you, but let's not go overboard with our empathy statements. If there's no need to apologize, then you don't have to apologize because the customer is already in a difficult or challenging situation at the moment. And the last thing he probably wants to hear is all apologies or all empathy statements without doing anything. So it has to be a balance of uh, a sincere and genuine empathy statement and also your ability to help the customer right away and have a sense of urgency on the matter. Next is you might encounter a lot of jargons because this is for a healthcare account and a lot of us might not have the experience beforehand, but don't worry about that too much because as I've mentioned, you will be discussing those things in training. So everything will be taught to you and if there is anything that you don't understand, of course, I always say this, don't just pretend that you know it, but instead ask your supervisor, ask anyone that you can ask about it and make sure that you deliver the correct and accurate information. In that particular call, since the customer was kind of confused of what he received, then of course it is your responsibility to explain to the customer what that mail or paperwork is all about. And in that case, the agent was able to explain that as well. And it even resulted to an agreement between the customer and the agent about what the bill or not the bill, but what the EOB or explanation of benefits was all about. And obviously it is your responsibility to let the customer understand what's going on. Remember that in that kind of situation, you know, the customer might not have the time to read the letter or the mail and might not even have the mental capacity just yet to understand what's written on the letter. Something I also want to highlight is that most of the time when we receive this type of call, you know, again and again, some agents would just think that this customer is not reading the letter or this customer is not reading paperwork or anything like that. But you also have to put yourself on the customer's truth. If you just came from the hospital or from an accident, you probably will not have the mental capacity as well to read letters, to understand what's on the paperwork or anything like that. So be sensitive enough to explain to the customer what it is about even though you know for yourself that yes the customer could have just read that letter and he could have understood right away but then again the customer needs your help because he is in a challenging situation at the moment and as you remember in the call the customer said he does not want to deal with another bill because he still has a lot of medicines to to buy or to purchase that being said it is very important for you to have a customer centric kind of attitude wherein you put your customer in the front and center of everything first and think of it as a situation that might also happen to you and you know for sure that you will also probably not have that strength to go through that situation yourself and as I always say in my mock call videos always make sure to use positive scripting or positive words or even encouraging words uh, especially in this type of call and again if you need help with positive scripting i have a video about that previously i can link it up there so you can check it out after this video i totally forgot to explain the claim process so just in case some of you are not familiar let me give you an idea the moment a customer or member gets admitted to a hospital his personal information including his insurance will be obtained in this case an insurance claim is processed the hospital will call the insurance provider or hmo or health management organization examples maxicare and intellicare here in the philippines 
So most likely, the insurance or HMO evaluates the charges that they can cover based on the policy or coverage of the member. For example, they will either cover all hospital expenses or can be just the hospital room and 50% of the total expenses. It depends. So in the call, when the member reported a paperwork, he thought it was a bill that he needs to pay, but it was actually just an explanation of benefits letter that tells him what charges were already covered or paid by the insurance. Another thing that you may want to know is the verification or authentication process for this type of call. And again, uh, each call flow is different from one company to another. So you always have to follow the guidelines that are taught to you by your account. A lot of healthcare accounts have ZTPs or zero tolerance policies. And this applies mostly to authentication or verification procedures so remember to always follow the guidelines given by your account because those are the only guidelines that matter i mean even though i have this mock call flow right now of course this may or may not be applicable to you this is just a sample call after all so make sure that you obtain the right verification information details and follow the right authentication procedures so that you will not get a ZTP or zero tolerance policy warning. And this is important because this might cost you your job. It is that important. In my previous account, especially that is a financial institution, we can get fired just for not properly authenticating a customer or a caller. So think about that yourself, but do not let it hinder your performance or do not let it scare you. It's really just a matter of knowing exactly what to do, what information to ask, and what questions to ask as well. This may or may not be a simple call type for you, but I hope I was able to give you an idea of how it works. Obviously, this is just one of the many call types and I won't be able to give you everything, but at least we can start from here, right? If you have any questions at all, or if you have comments and topic suggestions, make sure to comment below. In my next video, we are going to have another mock call video, so tune in and watch out for that as well. Now, if you like this content, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you on my next one. Bye.